these cold walls of thunder bay chapter eight there was nothing but darkness you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face it was really that bad there was only just enough room for me to sit down in that cell but that was it i couldn't move anywhere i just had to sit in the darkness it was meant to help me come to terms with what i had done this was it for 24 hours a day my one meal would be brought to me and slid through a hatch the same hatch that i had to pass out my chamber pot through it was hell the worst thing was i hated being myself i always had someone even when stanley married alice we still had each other but being on my own was horrible it was probably the very first time in my life that i had been totally alone to pass the time between sleeping and eating i thought about when we were growing up when we were back at home with the family mother and father never really liked having us about well my father certainly didn't and he always made sure we knew one toe out of line boy he used to say he sounded like one of the guards here when he was drunk his favorite thing to do if he had thought we had misbehaved was to smack us with his belt no not one belt that he wore but rather one that used to hang up above the fireplace that was his mark of authority in the house it wasn't just me and stanley that would get it mother would too he would normally make us line up in the living room and he would smack us one by one until we couldn't take it it was stupid fighting back that would just get us hurt more all my life we've had people of authority above us making our lives hell that's why we left as soon as we could for as long as i live i will always remember that final night we had at home we had the neighbors over for supper that was the worst bit from outside we looked like a perfect family guests would come and go and be entertained by father he was brought up in ireland and would recount tales of his family and how they struggled during the potato famine he would also sing his favorite was one his mother used to sing to him one about a family being broken up when the father was sent to prison for stealing food to keep his family alive i can never remember the name of it but i would always remember the first line by a lonely prison wall maybe that was father's way of telling us we would end up in prison one day little did i know back then that i would be the one sitting staring at a lonely prison wall but as i was saying about that final night at home the neighbors were just getting ready to leave when father asked them if they wanted a quick drink one for the road this of course turned into three four five drinks and father began to get violent this was of course when the neighbors decided that they were going to leave they got out just in time i don't know how it started but mother and father got into a fight he started hitting her and shouting i couldn't stand for it any longer and i fought back i grabbed that belt and started hitting him with all my might and force stanley joined in and started kicking him that was the point that we'd had enough of it all all those years of violence and it looked like it was going to end and that night it did father was stronger than we were so we managed to get us off him mother was shouting at us all to stop and she finally got us all to calm down we were calm enough to stop killing each other anyway sorry mother but that's how it is now i said it's time to make a choice either he goes or we do i knew she wouldn't make that choice but rather we tried to work things out she stood in silence for a few moments that's all i needed to know come on stan let's go we went away to our bedroom and began collecting up what we needed to survive for a few days i didn't know where we would go or what we would do but i knew it had to end now and we had to leave we left that night and we didn't look back between us we had enough money to survive for a few nights in a hostel in town but after that we would have to find another way to keep a roof over our heads and to keep us in food we managed to stay with some friends after our time in the hostel they tried to urge us to go back home apparently our departure had broken our mother the night we left was the last time that we saw our father but we did go back to the house a few months after to see mother just to check how she was yes she was sad and broken but she had no one to blame but herself she could have got rid of father and started again but she didn't i only realize now that once we left we had put her in a confinement of her own we tried so hard to make it on our own but it just wasn't possible we soon ended up living on the streets and that is when our life of crime really began it seemed the best way that we could to get something for nothing if we didn't get caught doing it 
Looking back now, I can see that we did make all of the wrong choices in life, but you can't change the past. You have to look to the future, a future that is in doubt because of this place. I kept thinking for the rest of that night in the cell what I would do if we managed to escape. We would have to flee, maybe run to Ireland and start again over there. We could open another bar, we could do anything we wanted to, but that was if the escape was successful. But hell, we didn't have anything to lose. We had to do it. That is, if I was ever let out of this damn cell. I found myself missing the prison life. I missed getting up and working. It gave me a purpose, otherwise I was just a nobody. I kept thinking how Stanley was and how he was coping without me. It can't have been easy on him. This would have been the longest time we'd have ever been apart in all of our lives. That was the magical thing about Thunder Bay. It was a great place at crushing your soul and putting out any last flicker of hope you had. I cried. For the first time in a long time, I actually cried. I was glad no one could see me do that. It wasn't in my nature. I thought it would maybe be best to try and get some sleep. That was about all you could do in that cell. I tried to work out what time it was. I'd only had supper about an hour ago, so it couldn't have been any later than half past seven. I hated the thought of everyone else having their free time that evening, laughing, joking and everything while I was stuck in here with nothing. I closed my eyes for what only seemed like a few moments when I heard the cell door unlock. The light poured in from outside, nearly blinded me. Get back to the wing. You're out of confinement now, a gruff voice said. I couldn't believe it. I was getting to go back. After nearly two weeks in confinement, I was ready to see everyone. That flicker of hope came back, and it was shining pretty bright.